Hello world, it's Austin. Let's talk about being transgender and Christian. Oh man, I have a great surprise for you all this week. This is going to be the very first transgender and Christian guest video, because guess what? I'm just one person, and I'm not representative of all trans Christians by any means. So I'm hoping to open up the platform a little bit and do more guest videos and introduce you to some really cool people, so I hope you enjoy them. This week I'd like to introduce you to my friend M, who is non-binary, but I'll let them speak for themselves. So M, take it away, tell us a little bit about yourself and about how you identify. Hello, my name is M. I use they, them, their pronouns. I am currently living in Chicago, uh, though I'm a southerner at heart. I identify as a non-binary trans person. I'm also okay with the word genderqueer for me. Um, this identity for me means that uh, I've never really found an authentic home in the gender of woman nor of man. And uh, when I was exposed to the reality of non-binary genders, uh, it finally made sense for, for who I am. For me, again, it's just about uh, being able to identify as um, something other than a man or a woman. I believe that uh, gender is much more expansive than those two categories. And I think uh, with time, we'll see that there are a lot of people that actually would be much more comfortable in a gender identity outside of one of those two. Non-binary identities can be really liberating uh, and finally help us to um, feel like there's language for who we are. Totally. I remember how it felt to come across language that I identified with for the first time. It was amazing. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your faith community and how you participate in it? So I'm a United Methodist. I grew up mostly in the Methodist Church. My dad is Catholic, so I spent some time in the Catholic Church occasionally as well uh, and did a little non-denom stuff in high school. But largely, uh, the Methodist Church has always been my spiritual home. Uh, it's been a complicated relationship uh, for a number of years now, especially when I came out as queer and then certainly now uh, identifying as trans as well. Um, but it's a very meaningful part of my life. I am called to be a deacon in the United Methodist Church, so I'm on the ordination track. Uh, I went to seminary a couple years years back. Uh, I currently attend Broadway United Methodist Church, which is here in Chicago. It's a small community that I'm very proud to be a part of. Uh, and I also work at Reconciling Ministries Network, which is not an official United Methodist organization, but uh, we are uh, basically a bunch of United Methodists organizing to create uh, LGBTQ justice in the United Methodist Church. That's really cool. Uh, is there one thing that you wish the rest of the LGBTQ community would remember about non-binary folks? Simply <laughs> that we exist would be a nice start. Uh, you know, I, so I identify as queer, but bi is also true for me. I'm attracted to more than one gender. Um, and I, I have found a lot of parallels between how the queer community treats bi people and how the um, trans community can sometimes treat non-binary people. Uh, there's this idea that um, both bi and non-binary people are sort of halfway between the other identities. We are defined by what we're not, how much of what, of, uh, what identities we're not, uh, much like bi people are often defined by, uh, you know, you're not fully gay, some gay people will say, and you're definitely not fully straight if, if you're bi. Um, I just wish that uh, the queer and trans community would, would free, <laughs> free us, free themselves of that sort of thinking and allow us to stand on our own within the community, not as what we're not or how much of, of other identities we are or aren't, but as our own identity within a diverse community of queer and trans people. I just, I wish that uh, people would be more mindful of the ways that we keep playing out these same systems and narratives within our own communities over and over, uh, which don't allow us to really support each other um, like we should and like I think we would all benefit from. Absolutely. I know as a binary trans person, I often fall into the ditch of assuming that people are one thing or another, and I should know better. I know lots of people feel, at least in the beginning, like their gender identity and their faith are in conflict somehow. Did you ever feel that way? I haven't ever consciously had to struggle with my faith and my gender identity. Uh, it's kind of a 
the opposite of that, I guess, in some ways. I um, grew up very, very conservative and totally unaware of trans identities and hardly aware of different sexual orientations. And I was, you know, pretty extreme in, in terms of being opposed to um, queer people. <laughs> And so by the time I went to college and ultimately seminary, I had a lot of, of theological uh, work to do, a lot of undoing of a very narrow understanding of who God is and, and who I am and who the world is. Um, and I feel very lucky to have been able to uh, really dive into not only social systems and how those uh, were playing out in my narrow faith growing up, but also be exposed to some um, other theologies that certainly I never heard of growing up, but things like queer theology and feminist theology and womanist theology and black theology and liberation theology, these things completely brought me to life and transformed my faith and transformed who I understand God to be and again, who that allows and calls all of us to be. Uh, by the time that I worked out my sexual orientation, I just had a different framework that actually instead of keeping me from coming out as trans, it empowered me to come out. Uh, I, I don't know that I would have had the strength if it were not for um, a very empowering uh, uh, spirituality and, and theology um, that, you know, insisted I be who I am as God created me to be. So my faith has allowed me to enter into that uh, rather than kept me from it. Okay, last question. Was there ever a time when you felt like your gender identity and your faith were totally in sync, like there was no conflict whatsoever? Last year I went to the Trans Health Conference in Philadelphia and I met up with some other uh, trans and trans affirming Christians who are actually pastors and it was just so nice to be able to um, speak and, and, and play and relax with other Christians who didn't have to be on the defense about my gender identity, but who saw it as an incorporation of their, incorporated into their own faith. Um, and I just felt so free in that. And I think, you know, for a lot of us who are trans and, and or queer, um, the church is currently not incorporating sexual orientation and gender identity uh, into you know theology and discipleship and liturgy um, and and I just think that for those of us who are the minority in those ways uh, sometimes the most powerful powerful thing to do is to create that stuff ourselves and then invite those in the church who want to participate into it we need to create the stuff ourselves and we are capable and um, we are um, called to it. <laughs> Thanks so much, Em. I feel so lucky to hear from more voices within our community, and there's always more I could ask, but we're gonna try to keep this video as short as possible. So thank you for answering all my questions. It's been a pleasure. And thanks for watching the video this week, everybody. If you want to connect with M and check out their work with the United Methodist community, definitely do that. You can find them on Twitter. Their ha handle is MXBarclay, so I'm going to put that down below as well so you can check that out. I won't see you back here next week because I'm taking a quick break to prepare for the Gay Christian Network Conference. So if you're going to be there, I'll see you then. Otherwise, hit subscribe and I will see you back here on January 13th for the first video of 2016. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace.